Alrighty, we're good. Hey guys, welcome to my next Let's Play. This one we're doing live with the patrons. Well, the supporters in general. This is Love Sucks Night 1. This was suggested by a fan. So I have no idea if it's good or not. Let's see if it is. This game is night one of three nights for the main character. We tried to make this game as complete as possible, but some features such as girl mode are not com complete. This is our first game and larger for us, and larger for us. A proof of concept that we could do it, and we think we did. On behalf of Art Witch Studios, thanks for playing. This game contains bad endings that feature blood and death. The dream always starts the same. Dick. The flu I'm floating in a nebulous void. And then they arrive. Floating to me, gather around me. They float to me, gather around me. I feel safe with them. They never seem to mean me any harm. They want what I can't give. Then I wake up. Theo had been having the same dream every night for two weeks. I want to play gun cat. Ever since the night they worked on their history papers at, li at the library. Every night about Jan and Anna. He didn't know what to make of it or them. He was working with Jan and Anna and his best friend Sarah at the library. In a flash of inspiration, he managed to come up with everyone's thesis statement. It was his junior year of college. Theo had gone away to school with his childhood friend, Sarah. There they met with a fellow student, Adam, who gave them both nicknames. Theo's nickname is... Chat, should it be Anon? Or should it be something else? As always, this one's up to you. Make it randomized just to be snarky. His name is now Sparky. Yes. And Sarah's nickname is... That's fucking stupid. I'm gonna close my eyes and stop. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Alright, that's a dumb name. We'll go with that. It's 5.30. I've got to get something to eat. Thick burger. That's amazing. Investiga investigators reach out to federal authorities to solve museum theft. Damn it, I was reading that. Most social man alive. Hey, Adam, what's up? Ah. Am I listed, listed in your phone as most social man alive? Uh, why would you think that? Oh, that means I definitely am. Well, it's fitting, isn't it? You're in every club on campus. Sparky grinned. Except for a certain one. I don't bring up your failures. Don't bring up the horticultural club. It was an accident, okay? He's going to talk my ear off. I could zone out. He'll stop at any. He'll stop at anything important. Why does it say skip scene? And I can always replay the conversation a bit in my head. I think it mostly boils down to how we met. We were at the stupid freshman meet and greet, and that girl was bothering you, trying to get you into trying to get into your pants. 
So you just wrapped your arms around me and Sarah and exclaimed, Sparky and Fox, it's great to see you. Let's go outside and catch up. What's the problem again? You walked up to two random people and gave them two random nicknames? And they suck? I thought they were fitting for the for the time. At least it's not something boring like booger or tax. I'm just glad I didn't get a nickname. I didn't get the nickname Fox. I don't know how Sarah stands it. Hey, you got a nickname and a roommate. That's pretty cool, right? If I find out you're passing out nicknames to other randos, I'm going to be very upset. I think it's only in my history class people call us by our real names. Why? We don't announce our nicknames. Other people do. Small class means fewer people. People know, I guess. Anyway, how'd you find out about the most social man alive thing? Your twin told me. Figured Fox got the contact card from you. She's not my twin. We look nothing alike. You two are dead ringers for each other. You even wear your hair clipped the same way. That's a friendship thing. Why were you bothering her? Trying to convince her to come out to the festival in the hopes that it'll convince you too. You are persistent. And underhanded. Come on, man. It's going to be three whole days of parties, games, and dancing. Crescent Valley always goes all out on Halloween, and I don't want to see you squander it. Hell, the, professor, uh, the professors are helping set up events with the clubs for Friday night. You know that Fox and I have a huge test in a week and a half. You both study enough. I don't even have a costume. Besides, we can't follow you around all night. There's always those two from your history class. Sparky groaned. Ugh. You still having that dream? Yeah. Did you ask Rachel about it? My girlfriend would like to remind you that she's a psychology major, not a dream reader. Right, right, and? She says that dreams are a reflection of your mental state. She thinks you like those, those two, but you're worried that a relationship will destroy you somehow? Personally, I think you're worried that if you try to ask either of these girls out, it'll take away from your career plans. I should have grabbed my Either one would suit you. I've had a class with both of them. Jan's a bit of a... She's... Jan's a bit aloof, but she's cool when you get to know her. She's got that ambition and drive. Her only problem is that she's about as good at technology as my grandmother. Meanwhile, Anna is the sweetest girl you- Oh my god, it's sadistic blood. This is literally sadistic blood, isn't it? Just with less... Sadistic. Oh god, why? Meanwhile, Anna is the sweetest girl you'll ever meet. A nice, caring girl that will help you relax. They are way out of- Or sorry, they are way out of my league, though. They are, All they probably see me as is a brain. That's because they don't know about the monster that lives in the garage. Don't talk about my penis, it's weird, man. Just less sadistic, we hope. Well, someone has to think of the little guy. You certainly are not. Ah! Hold on. Who the fuck? Who keeps- Oh. Stop DMing me! <laughs> A little hard-hitting commentary? No, Sammy scared me. He jumped up demanding food. Oh, the french fry cat. Oh, that is a cute kitty. Sparky reached into his bag and presented the cat with a french fry. The cat took it happily and nibbled it. You can't let the cat outside of, Mc of McThickburger be the only pussy that warms you up. Crude. But good wordplay, admit it. College is not just about studying, but also about finding connections. And you don't have a lot of those. At least think about it. Alright, fine. I gotta get to class. I'll catch you later. Later, Rumi. Sparky hung up and sighed. What do you think, Sammy? Ow. That's easy for you to say. You're not paying for dinner. 
Looks like Sammy found another sucker to trick after I gave him fries. Oh, hey, Fox. Didn't know you were here. When you saw most social men alive calling, you didn't think it would be Adam? No, I knew it was him. I assumed he knew you did that. Sparky snorted. I knew he'd take it as a compliment. Shall we head out? Yeah, bye, Sammy. Ow. You're so nervous. You're nervous about getting our papers back? Little bit. You do realize you probably saved our butts. The four of us were sitting there struggling, and you figured all. You figured out all of our thesis statements. Moment of inspiration, I suppose. Jan and Anna help with that. Fox giggled, but Sparky sighed. Still having, still having the dream. Yeah. Adam thinks it's because I'm scared to ask them. Fox snorted. Yeah, and Bigfoot exists. Since we both have been looking at the same girls since we were 13, I will assure you they are way out of your league. Thank you. Try to explain that to him. Natural extroverts and the things they don't get about introverts. Think you have a better chance with Naomi, perhaps? Oh, fuck off. That's not a... That, fuck off with that. That's a fucking vampire hunter. That's what that is. The other girl in class? That it require her to talk to somebody. She wouldn't even join us all working on our papers. Also, I think she'd probably punch me in the stomach. Yeah, probably. Jan or Anna before her. But I'll tell you something. If one of them asked me out... Yeah. Fox looks like she was in a daze. I'd bury my head between their legs and eat that pussy till I fainted. Sparky couldn't contain himself and bursted out laughing. You wouldn't? No, no, I would. Trust me, I would. Sparky was having trouble keeping focus in class. He normally did very well in Dr. Blankenship's class, but the dream kept coming to the fore of his mind. So, we can see how the diplomacy is a powerful tool for exchange. Even two former bitter rivals, the US and the Britain. Jesus, fuck! Jesus, shut that shit off! I'm trying, Dr. Black and Ship. Jan attempted to fiddle with- I am turning that shit down on my end. Oh, Jesus, it was on the wrong thing. So, chat, do you enjoy being deaf? <laughs> do you? Hold on, I have to invite my friend. Oh, my God. Jan attempted to fiddle with her phone to make it stop before Anna reached over. And think it came through the stream. Did it come through my my neck thing? Oh my god, don't tell me that actually was loud enough to echo that. That scared the living shit out of me. Wasn't that loud, it was for me. Like, these are down very low, and that was incredibly loud for me. Here, I got it. Oh, thank you, Anna. What are you going to do with... What are we going to do with you, John? You're the only undergrad I know that can't control her phone. <laughs> okay, so I was the only one that heard that. Okay. Okay. Fine, I'll turn it back up. Fine. Swear to God, if I listen to that recording and I can hear it really loud compared to my voice, I'm smacking the rest of you. Speaking of AC... I'm gonna go turn on my AC. I'll be right back. Give me one quick second. Enjoy the doggo! It's fucking hot. Oh. I'm also gonna go ahead and grab some, uh, some ice, so enjoy this image until I get back.
Pepper Dogs. Come back in the room with me, Pepper Dogs. Fuck all of you. For the record, fuck all of you. That was loud. Also, I hate this fucking neck setting. I can't wait for Bear to send me a new one. Or, uh, Starscream. Oh, God, shit! Oh, shit, hold on, I just fucking spilled my water. Oh, my God, where is my... Oh, God, it's getting everywhere near my fucking mouse. No, Miko, don't stand in front of me, baby. I don't want to play with you today. Oh, shit. Shit, 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 shit. I hope I got that work out on my mouse. Great stream so far. You know what? You can shut the fuck up. You paid for this. Ah, oh, Jesus. Oh, I got all over my fucking mat. It's a very, very durable fucking game mat, too. That's good. Oh, thank you. Shut up. Put too much ice in my cup. Oh, no, and it all froze together and I can't move my straw. This is great. Ah! I'm just keeping this all in. That's it. I won't be able to shut my mouse. Ah, oh, fuck me. Damn it. All right, let's continue. Shut up. What are we going to do with you, Jan? You're the- Fuck me. I'm just going past this. Uh, oh. Damn it, I can't move my mouse. Oh, where did that go? Oh, shit. Here we go. I moved everything on my mic thing. Here we go. I'm so sorry. Wow, they aren't even hiding that she's a vampire. It's all right. I'm teasing you now. Where all were we? Oh, yes. Diplomacy. Uh, okay. They had their seizure and they went. Sparky's eyelids felt extremely heavy. The girls kept twirling through his mind. Speaking of diplomacy, it's been said about Cleopatra that she had oral sex with hundreds of Greek men in one night. I'm sure the throbbing phallus and the embrace of a warm mouth brokered a lot of deals. Who knows, those lips might have advanced human civilization by a century or two. But sex in ancient times wasn't just a di diplomatic tool. In some cultures, it held much more significance. The idea... Sorry, the idea... The idea that you were wanted, that you were desired by someone, was a powerful thing. Primal forces all of its own. Hold on, quiet, Miko. To the block, to lock eyes with someone. The spark of a feeling. Of a desire between two people. Such a rarity, but something that every single one of us can understand. To some, that power had to have come from on high. Sorry, Dr. Blackship. No, I was prepared for it this time. Is that our character, or is that the chick? Hey, Jan, let me see. I'm going to make you start turning it off before class. All right, everyone, class dismissed. I posted the grades for your papers. If there's anything you want to talk about, email me. How did you do? A. A minus good. God, you saved our asses, you know that? Down the hall, they saw the girls moving toward them. Hey, Sarah, can you... Can we talk about Theo for a moment? Oh, sure. I'll see you tomorrow, Theo. It seems that we have received an A on our, pipe, on our papers. It was really fantastic. Oh, it was nothing. It was- it wasn't nothing, I assure you. If you didn't help, well, we might have failed super hard. Anna leaned in and pressed her chest against his shoulder. 
So to thank you, we want you to take we want to take you out for the Halloween festivities this weekend. Sorry guys, the way the um I think it's the way that the um the words are is what's throwing me off. I wonder if there's a way to Okay, they don't have it. Sometimes they have it to where you can just change it to different font. Me? Yeah, cutie. Don't you think it'd be nice? Let's go out and we'll show you a good time. Anna traced a finger over his shirt, down the to the down to the center of his chest. Well, I mean, I... We want to do a little more than just walk around campus. Things might get a little interesting if you catch my meaning. Are you in? Sparky could have fainted. Uh, all right, sure. Good, we'll meet you at the Ke at the Keller Quad tomorrow at 6.30 sharp. Don't tell anyone. We don't want to turn it into a party. Just some private time. And don't forget a costume. It is Halloween after all. They turn to walk away. You're gonna have a real good time. Oh, so it does have dialogue. Okay. We'll see you there. Were they talking before? Sparky watched the two girls walk away and felt a bit shell-shocked as his eyes followed them as they exited the building. Is that a dick hair clip? Was it? I didn't see. So what was that about? Ah! Fox, you thought- I thought you left! Yeah, but I had to know what they wanted, so what did they say? Uh, well, I, uh, they ain't into pussy. Fox's eyes went wide. They asked you out, didn't they? Shh. They didn't tell- they said don't tell anybody. Were you eavesdropping? No. It's the look on your face. It's priceless. Did you say yes? Y yeah. Two big-titted chicks just asked me out. Of course I said yes. That's great. Y you're not jealous? No, I'm glad. I mean, I would be lying if I said I wasn't a tiny bit jealous, but they seem to like you. It'll be great. Don't worry about me. I'll call up Adam and find something to do. We gotta get you a costume. <laughs> hey there. I see you back there. Come say hi. I like redheads. Come here. Come on. Come on, eye patch. Come here. Come on. You don't need to hide. Fine. Oh, that's what we look like. No, it's a question mark. Okay. The sun with the f Hold on. Fucking stupid neck thing. I can't keep doing that crackly thing. The sun was setting as Sparky headed out to out of his dorm for the Keller Memorial Quad. He had about 30 minutes until he had to meet the girls, just enough time to grab a snack at the click and go. With the vintage bomber jacket his uncle gave him years ago, it is a nice jacket. He was hoping to pass as a World War II pilot. Nothing fancy, but not ba but not bad given the short notice. The light and sound of the carnival blared in the distance. The Ferris wheel just peeking over the tree line. He wondered if they were going to end up going there. It was most likely that if they were meeting at the quad, they were going to do campus events, like the tour of the library or the trick or the trick or treat at the science building. The probably speak doesn't spell well. Oh, them I didn't notice. Luckily, he hadn't seen Adam since this morning. If he found him putting together a costume, there would be no end to the questions. And if he found out Sparky was going out with the girls, he'd try to get them all together. As he walked, he saw fellow co-eds wandering the campus dressed in all sorts of fun outfits. Sparky wondered what outfit the girls picked. He promptly blushed. He cut into the alley between the two lecture buildings to save time. Even if he was still on campus, he never liked this alleyway. Too many too many twists and turns, and the lights were always flickering. They made this alley just to fuck with you. The sound of people laughing, the noise of the carnival faded as he walked between the buildings. Hmm. Sorry, I was taking a drink. He, round the cor he rounded one of the corners and saw a figure waiting for him. Go home. Oh, now you decide to fucking talk, game. 
It was an interesting outfit you have there, Naomi. I was right. She approached, stopping a few feet from him, blocking his path. You need to go home. You know my nickname? I know a lot of things. Like how those two invited you out. Sparky groaned. It is literally sadistic. <sighs> Sorry, Papa. God, does everyone know? They said don't tell anybody. The truth is, those two plan to drain you tonight. Well, you never know where the night might take us. Not like that, you idiot. They plan to murder you tonight, and they want to keep it a secret so they can get away with it. That was a line reading. I shouldn't shit on that. And why would they want to do that? Naomi adjusted her stance and took a breath. You're going to say you don't believe me, but they're monsters. Well, yeah, they're college students. Sparky just stared at her for a moment with a blank expression. It's good that you already knew my response. But now that you mention it, I did remember Anna mentioning something about loving chainsaws and dismembering bodies. No, I mean they're fucking monsters. <laughs> Jan's a vampire, which is why you don't see her outside during the day, and Anna's a succubus, which is why you can't keep your eyes off her tits. No, I'm just gonna say she has big tits, that's usually why. Men usually stare at those. I, I don't. Sparky blushed before he furled his brow. And you know this how? Because it's my job to keep monsters in line, and killing humans is crossing it. Tell me where you're supposed to meet them, then go home. I will take care of it. No. No? What do you mean, no? I don't know what your problem is with them. They're good people, and I'm not going to share in your delusion. This whole spooky co-ed roommates thing sounds like a bad urban legend. You're not fooling me, Naomi. He moved past her and kept walking. Naomi trailed after him. I'm not trying to fool you. I'm trying to save you, dickwad! What the fuck is... Okay. Okay. Sparky stopped and turned to face her. You know what? I missed out on enough things in my life because I had second thoughts. And missing a date with those two because someone told me they're monsters sounds like, a li sounds like life has run out of ideas to foul up a good night. I'm not the kind of guy to stand up a girl, let alone two. Sparky started to walk away. Wait. He stopped but didn't turn. What? Is this the part where you say... Monsters don't exist. Sparky rolled his eyes and sighed. Yeah, Naomi. This is the part where Sparky was forcefully jerked back by an iron grip and then quickly spun around. Naomi lifted him off the ground with one hand. Sparky was a full inch shorter than her. But still, she did so with no effort. See you a werewolf girl. Sparky barely had time to process what was going on before she slammed him into the wall, knocking the air out of him. He struggled to breathe as she slipped her eye patch off. Now comes the part where, where I, I show you monsters, monsters exist. Hey, fuck it, we'll bang the red one. She revealed an eye with black sclera and yellow glowing iris. The two onyx-colored horns sprouted from her forehead as she, as her canines elongated into a snarl. Sparky wanted to scream, but couldn't get the air in his lungs to do so. He tried to figure out any way that this was some kind of trick, but came up blank. After a tense moment, Naomi dropped him. Sparky struggled to breathe as he backed against a wall. Now, tell me where you were going to meet them, and let me do my job. Hold on, I gotta fix my thing, my audio thing again. I can't make out what she's saying. Hmm. Give me a second, everyone. You gonna work? 
Thank you. Now connect. Thank you. I can make such a joke right now, but I'd be in trouble. He watched amazement as her horns and teeth began to recede. You're, you're up. Yep. Glad I was able to figure out your response. She adjusted her eye patch, put it back in place, and glared down at him as Sparky continued to stare up at her. They just stared at each other for a moment before Naomi frowned and put a hand on her hip. This is generally the part where people tell me what I want to know before running away screaming. Or, at the very least, yell out something like, Don't hurt me. Naomi sighed and ran the bridge of her nose. Please don't be the frozen in fear type. I don't have a lot of time right now. If you want to hurt me, if you wanted to hurt me, you would have. Naomi's lips twitched in something close to a smirk as she seemed almost impressed. <laughs> well, that is a surprise. Maybe you are as smart as you look. She reached down to offer him a hand, the same one that lifted him into the air a moment ago. Look, I didn't mean to shatter your worldview. I'm having a rough day and I'm a bit stressed out. He looked at her hand, his heart still racing in his chest. He hesitantly took it, and she lifted him him without an ounce of effort. All right, you have stupid questions. Ask them. Oh, now we get to ask questions. Are you just voicing some of- Oh, you lazy shit. No, my eye glows because I had laser eye surgery. Yes, monsters exist. Next question. What did you expect me to say? Okay, fine. Yes, they always have existed, just like every urban fantasy, hiding in plain sight where your legends come from, blah, blah, blah. The difference, though, is there is no monster secret world, no coalition of monsters, no separate cities, and no secret schools. Monsters hide among you because they have to. Have to? I don't know if you've heard, but humans as a group are really good at killing anything that isn't them, particularly things that eat them. Hell, you killed a ne you killed the Neanderthals and they were you. When humans started building civilizations, monsters wanted in on the clothes, shoes, and booze. So they blended in and adapted. Some still killed humans, either to feed or because they felt like they had the right. But the human march of progress started to make that harder with better weapons, communication, and criminal investigation techniques. Criminal investigation techniques? Yeah, murder is a lot harder than it used to be, Sparky. Most of the dangerous monster species went extinct a long time ago. The rest are watered down. A few species still need to feed on humans, but they don't really kill anymore. They just kinda nibble. Okay. What are you? I'm a Cambian. What? She rolled her eyes. Part monster specifically, I'm a quarter demon. But who are you really? Like some kind of supernatural police officer or something? I'm from an organize organization whose goal is to keep monster kind... Secret? Contained. Most monsters want to live in peace. Our job is to keep the rowdy ones at bay. For the most part, just knowing we're out there keeps them in line. So then, are you some sort of trained immortal agent pretending to be a college student? No, I'm 20, and here at the scholarship program. <laughs> Keeping tabs on the local cryptids is more like a work-study thing. Why do you bow- I just noticed she has like Bowser's, um, bracelets. Oh, she does look like Bowser. I just realized that, too. So, those two feet on humans. Yeah. That was my dire warning to you. But wouldn't that raise suspicion in such a small town? Ah, uh, the intelligent question. They don't, they don't need to kill people to feed, but they still have to eat. Jan feeds on blood and Anna feeds on life force. Life force. She makes you die sooner? It's more like your virility, your active energy, generally only enough to knock you out. But it's not just sexual fluids, champ. She can get you through touch. 
both of them make you fall asleep and wake up the next day feeling hunger, hungover. Something easily explained away on a booze-riddled college campus. Jan has put people in the hospital, though. But neither of them have killed. Yet. Yet. So why do they want to kill me? Finally, we're getting to the heart of the matter. It's complicated. Try me. I've kept up so far, and I'm not exactly a Nimrod. Naomi's eyes, eyebrow raised for a moment. Hold on, give me one second. I thought that was about, that was the bank robbing gang. With the mass now too small scale. Besides, the whole town would have heard the, heard the tech now. Sparky perked a brow. Okay, so I'm guessing it was the girls? Yes, they stole the talisman of... Yep. I'm just gonna call it the MacGuffin. <laughs> Fuck you. It's an old witch artifact from the Crescent Valley heyday. What does it do? It's a very human thought process to think of a magical object does one thing. Your average mag and trinket can be used for a variety of spells. And you can combine them with others to produce more powerful artifacts or effects. The MacGuffin by itself is not particularly powerful. That's why the museum had it. Come on. Oh, damn it. Mike Bell. That's what's going on. There we go. I detected its magical signature in class last week, and it's got a new and powerful aura. One that matches the blood ritual. The ritual that allows a pair of monsters to mature into more powerful forms if they kill a particular human by feeding on them. For Jan, she'll ascend to a vampire lord, able to start her own clan. For Anna, she'll turn into a full succubus, able to fully change into any form she wishes. The two of them combine, there's no telling what they could do with their powers. They're women, they'll just fight amongst themselves. And you're sure this is what they're doing with it? You said it can have other purposes, right? Well, they could be summoning bears, but let me ask you this. And any strange dreams lately? Ah, uh, well... According to my research, the target human will start to have... Naomi pulled a thick leather-bound book from the inside of her jacket and flicked through the pages. Best I can decipher, uh, wet dreams. No, 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 not wet dreams, just... Regular ones? About the girls? Sexual? I don't think they're summoning bears, then. So, why me? Why not someone else? That I don't know. It says a specific human. It could be your blood type, age, sign you were born under, all of the above. I don't know, but it's you. And I'm afraid it gets worse. It gets worse? Blood rituals usually just get worse. They have a time limit to kill you. If they fail to do it, the resulting backlash will ho horribly maim all three of you. They'll probably survive. They'll probably survive. You'll die. You'll, li you'll likely die. Sparky suddenly felt sick. So, what are you going to do? I thought we were past the point of asking stupid questions. What do you think I'm going to do? You're going to kill them? I'm under orders. Neutralize their abilities to perform the, this ritual or neutralize them. If one of the monsters knows the pack or dies, the other can't complete it. So if I get the drop on them, I can probably get at least one of them before the other kills me. Wait, what? She becomes somber. I'm in a weekend state. I'm in the weekend state until Halloween. I could take on one of them, but probably not both. I'm not thrilled about it, but it's my job. Do me a favor and name a kid after me or something. The color left Sparky's eyes. What, are they, what if they're making a mistake? Doing 40 and a 25 is a mistake. Starting a fucking blood ritual is not. You can't be like Monster Cop hand over your magical artifact. No, it doesn't work like that. If I get found out as a Monster Cop, they'll have to join or die. And they can't join because they feed on humans. Sparky grabbed his stomach and he felt physically ill. I don't want to- I don't want this. Why would you be willing to die for this? For me? 
because this is what has to be done. You humans are too frail to defend yourselves and too stupid to see beyond the tight shirt and short skirt. A pair of monsters are plotting to become the more to become more powerful with a magic artifact by killing a human, by killing you. This is exactly what my organization exists to prevent, to put dangerous monsters down. They're not monsters, Naomi, they're people. People just like you. Naomi was a bit surprised by that statement. They have hopes and flaws and something must have forced their hands to do this. No, they could be just evil. I don't want them to die and I certainly don't want you to die for me. I'm surprised you don't want to I'm sure you don't want to die for me either, do you? Naomi looked away, arms folded. Not particularly, but I have my orders. Neutralize them or neutralize their ability to complete the ritual. Then what if we can neutralize the ritual? You said it yourself. That if you have the thing that can you can figure out what it does, does that include a way to make it not work? Naomi looked at him for a moment, considering things. Maybe, but what's your plan? I'll meet up with them and get the MacGuffin thing. <laughs> Every time he says MacGuffin. Yes. And how are you going to do that? I don't know. I'll figure something out. What do we have to lose? You have a lot to lose. Your life, for starters. I don't got shit, honestly. It's better than sitting back and watching you lose yours. What do you say? This is retarded, stupid, not going to work. This is a terrible idea. And you have to be the biggest fucking moron I've ever met in my life. A good-natured fucking moron, but a fucking moron nonetheless. I don't suppose you have any protection? If you're going out on a date, I hope you have a condom. I have one. Uh, the one I carry in my wallet. You're going out with two girls and you brought one condom? God, you're a fucking dork. I meant like a magical item or spell to cast or something like that. Well, there is one thing. I found a powerful spell that offers protection to targets of a ritual with this harmonic signature. So, I'll be immune? That I don't know. These ancient mages never explain shit properly. A rune is placed onto the recipient. When they touch the MacGuffin, they will, they will gain knowledge of future events. Whatever that means. <laughs> Somebody in the chat goes, they can share. Had the FBI agents from Bones as a protagonist. What? What are we talking about? Whatever that means, but it's more than your one condom. It also requires you to be bound to someone. That would be me. You also have to pick up a phrase to say during the ritual. I have to repeat it. I don't understand it, but let's make it snappy. Something easy to remember and say it under ten letters. I feel like, let's see, randomize. Mongo, apples, tingle, <laughs> punch. Obi Wan, Gun Cat. I like Gun Cat. Pizza, Obi. Obi keeps coming up. Obi is just the fucking word. Yes, it's Obi. You put your hand, your hand, put out your hand, and I'll mark it. Temporary. She shrugged. Probably. Sparky's face twisted in concern, and Naomi scowled. And that's where we're gonna leave it for this week. I'm a terrible person. We have not only been doing this for 13 minutes. Don't you fucking lie to me. So yeah, next week we'll be doing more of that. Now, that's not it for the vampires. I think I feel like torturing everybody today. I wasn't going to do this originally. I wasn't. But now I am.